Welcome to today's Advanced Television Academy debate uh, on the future of the set-top box. Uh, I'm Nick Snow, the publisher of AdvancedTelevision.com and Euromedia and IPTV magazines. And I'm delighted to say that we have with us today a panel uh, with representatives from a set-top set box supplier and from CA providers focused both on software and on card-based solutions, a semiconductor manufacturer and a supplier of a wide range of device components. I'm going to take a small risk now and let each of the participants uh, introduce themselves and describe what their company does and where it sits uh, in the set-top box business. Starting at my extreme left, uh, Steve. Thanks, Nick. Uh, I'm Steve Christian, VP of Marketing and Product Management at Veramatrix. With around uh, 200 operators in 37 countries around the world, we're setting the standard in software-based content protection and revenue enhancement for operators on a global basis. Jason. Um, my name is Jason Nesh. I'm from NXP Semiconductors. Uh, we're one of the market leaders in silicon solutions for set-top boxes, both in the retail and vertical markets. Thanks, Nick. I'm John Perzo with uh, Analog Devices. I'm a marketing director in the power management group. Analog Devices has been around for over 40 years, providing advanced uh, silicon solutions for systems like set-top boxes. Our primary goal is to help our customers get to market quickly with differentiated products. Uh, I'm Guy Bernal. I'm um, the EVP, Sales and Marketing, for Conex. Conex is a security provider for um, um, operators in the pay TV market. Uh, we have about 350 operators in more than 80 countries using our um, security. And our relationship with the set-top box vendors is that we license them to support our security, and we have about 200 licensees in the set-top box business now. Janelle. Thanks, Nick. I'm John Algill. I work for Prelly Broadband Solutions as Business Development Manager. We're a supplier of CPE equipment. This includes ADSL, VDSL, home gateways, home networking products, and IPTV set-top boxes. Good. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, SDBs were once just broadcast receivers, and, and some of them still are, um, but many are now very sophisticated client-server devices. Um, an end-to-end -end provider in IPTV uh, said recently uh, that the set-top box must become the gateway, the command center, and the entertainment server. Uh, but against that, you have uh, people like Cablevision in the States uh, who have just won the right to put the PVR on the network against uh, the content supplier's uh, wishes. Um, clearly, the roles will develop differently for different platforms, but the $64 million question Will set-top boxes remain the key link uh, in the distribution chain? Jamal. We definitely believe the set-top box is becoming uh, a more and more important role within the delivery of services, multi-player services, not just uh, broadcast TV. Um, we develop products or set-top boxes that uh, sort of embrace this concept of having a, a multi uh, delivery uh, platform. So we have IP TV providing the interactivity. We have uh, tuners such as uh, digital uh, DTT, uh, satellite, and uh, more recently web at night and internet type of services. And all these services, if you, if you can imagine, are all being broadcasted through a, a common sort of enhanced user experience platform. John, do you see it remaining front and centre? I think that's up to how the uh, set-top box manufacturers and the service providers and operators um, work together. I think the set-top box can uh, become commoditized. Um, if they simply react to operators' desires to keep their content as the, the single value proposition, uh, if the uh, set-top box manufacturers uh, really put out systems that uh, enhance the user experience and, and provide new revenue streams and new services, that the operators um, can value, then the set-top box will become a more, or can continue to become a more important uh, central home gateway or management system. Jason, I mean, you, you work on putting cleverness into the box. I mean, presumably you do see it st staying at the heart of the distribution? I think, yeah, very much so. I would agree with that point of view. Um, I mean, we're seeing similar uh, comments to my, my colleagues around the table. Um, a drive for having set-top box as the gateway um, with a lot of the operators. Um, a few are looking for slightly more distributed models. Um, maybe some of the intelligence goes into your gateway in the form of a modem and thinner set-top boxes around the home. 
Um, but even in those types of scenarios, when we say thinner set-top boxes, it just tends to mean the storage is elsewhere. The, the set-top box is still very capable. We're seeing lots more demands for new features to put into our silicon to entertain um, higher performance features to pass on to the user. So. Gear, you see the set-top box, the smart staying in there? I see also there are some challenges uh, in, uh, in this scenario because you will have more and more service provider that wants to deliver services into the home. And then the traditional model, it's the TV operator who actually have financed the set-top box. But uh, the TV operator will just be one part of this home gateway. Uh, so then it, it needs to be a change uh, in the whole market uh, in order to get this working because I don't see that uh, the telco or <clears throat> the broadband provider, if it is not the TV uh, operator, want the TV operator to control all broadband services into the home. So I think there will, we see some challenges in this scenario to making the set-up box the home gateway. And just, I remember uh, 10 years ago, I visited a plant in, in the US where they actually had home gateways at that time. Uh, but they met this challenge and, and it was just turned down. So I don't know if time is ready for it now, but for 10 years ago it was certainly not. So one of, one of the complexities with the home gateway is, is who owns it and who's expected to, uh, to, yeah, to service it and provide the materials in it. It's, it's, it's a, a physical manifestation of the presence of a pay TV operator inside the home. And I have to agree uh, that you know, it's becoming more competitive, that, that, uh, that particular point of presence and the services you can offer there is becoming more competitive. When you think about it from the consumer point of view, they're seeing you know, a multitude of different ways to consume video on different devices and things like that. No longer is the set-top box anchored with the big screen in the, in the corner of the living room. Uh, you're consuming video around the house. Um, obviously, a pay TV operator has to, to, uh, to really adapt its model of what it's going to deliver to the home and where their presence is going to sit in the home as the consumers become more and more demanding of where and how they want to consume uh, content. So it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a time for great evolution in the thinking of both the consumer and of the pay TV operator, how they want to deploy that, uh, that presence. And, and the set-top box vendor is left to adapt just as rapidly as he possibly can to, to whatever that position becomes. Well, I, you know, they're driven right now primarily by the demands of a pay TV operator. Most set-top boxes are either sold or specified by uh, a set-top box operator and contain security components as required by that pay TV operator to, uh, to enable revenue protection and uh, content protection uh, wherever that video is consumed. So, you know, as the, as the role of the set-top box evolves, perhaps the responsibility for payment for that particular capital cost evolves because it's a very significant part of every operator's rollout around the world is the, the cost of the equipment that they're deploying at the consumer premises. And if you want to shift that responsibility, perhaps evolve the functions of the box to be uh, you know, a mixture of responsibilities for different kind of networks, um, that's quite a shift in the, in the whole paradigm uh, of the industry that we're working in. But for the set-top box maker, doesn't that mean he might end up with more than one master? I think it probably, uh, probably might do, yeah. Or, or maybe no master. Because we, we see um, it coming from the different angle in, in the US, you see the TiVo, because they have started out from their, from their own side and then going after the retail market, not linked to the operator. And I think what we'll see is a kind of merge here that you, you will have these kind of boxes that can do everything. But from there to be the real home gateway is still a major step. Yeah, I think um, Kia touched on one of the points earlier. You have the competition between the broadcasters coming into the broadband market and the broadband providers coming into the TV market and the ones providing your traditional gateway, the others providing your TV, where do the two meet who control the set-top box makers? And then you have the added complication, if you like, of the retail market and emerging internet services, um, PVR type boxes from retail, which um, may then provide access to additional third-party services but over an open platform. Um, you've still got a lot of things to balance in the mix, I think, before you see a, a true uh, owner coming to the forefront. The set-top box folks have reacted most quickly to competition than they have to, say, this present master, the operator. When TiVo came out, I think that really drove set-top box evolution. 
uh, quickly, and all of a sudden, every set-top box had a, a hard disk drive in it. Prior to that, the the operators were probably against that because it, you know, it limited perhaps uh, either their, or they perceived it limited their revenue stream. So mm -hmm. I, I think if the set-top box manufacturers start uh, innovating or convincing their present masters, uh, we'll we'll see a move to home gateway more quickly.